Hey guys, in today's video we'll be discussing about the rate of reaction. This is an introduction video, so I'll be talking about what rate of reaction is. Before we get into rate of reaction, first we need to think about what the word rate means. Let's use a daily example. Let's say I turned on the tap such that water was only dripping out of the tap and I collected the water in a cup. Now we could say that the cup was filling up slowly. So we say that the rate at which the cup is filling up is low. It is a low rate. Then let's say the same tap, I turn it on such that the water is coming out in a stream like this. Then we could say that the cup is filling up fast. It's filling up quickly. And we would say that the rate at which the cup is filling up is high. So we can see an example of the use of the term rate here. But when we say slow and fast, it is not very helpful. So we need a way in which we can quantify this rate so that we can do a quantitative comparison between two different rates. Now, how do we do that? One way to do it is we can take the increase in volume of water in the cup per unit time. Now, this is a very important factor. Time is a very important factor because it would not make sense for me to compare the water dripping over a period of one year to the water flowing out in the stream over a period of one hour. This doesn't make sense at all. So when we are comparing rates, it is important that we are comparing over the same period of time. Now, this is easily referred to as one unit of time. So we can compare over one second or one minute or one hour. It doesn't matter. As long as we compare per unit time for one unit of time, then it is a fair comparison. How does this tie in with chemical reactions then? Let's take an example. Let's say we look at the reaction between calcium carbonate and hydrochloric acid. Now, the products of this reaction are calcium chloride, this will be an aqueous solution, water and carbon dioxide gas. In order to measure the rate of this reaction, we need to take a measurable or observable change per unit time that reflects that the reaction is taking place. When we look at this specific reaction, you notice that gas is being released. When gas is being released, then this reaction mixture is going to lose mass because carbon dioxide molecules are escaping into the surrounding. And therefore, the mass of the reaction mixture, the mass of this whole setup, is going to be decreasing as the reaction progresses. Now, let's say the mass was decreasing very quickly. Then, we could say that this reflects the rate of reaction because if the mass is decreasing quickly that means reaction is taking place quickly because more and more carbon dioxide is being formed per unit time so one way of measuring the rate of reaction is by taking the decrease in mass of the reaction mixture per unit time another quantity that we can measure is the concentration of the acid the concentration of the acid can be easily tracked by using a pH meter. We can track the pH of the acid, then we can track the concentration of the acid. Now, as the reaction progresses, the concentration of this acid is bound to decrease. This is because more and more of the hydrogen ions are going to collide with the calcium carbonate in order to form the products. This is also a reflection on how fast the reaction is taking place. So, if the decrease in the concentration of hydrochloric acid is greater, for one unit of time, for every second, for every minute or every hour, if the decrease in concentration is greater, then we could say that the rate of reaction is higher. So far, we've been looking at the change in the reactants. Now, we can also look at the change in the products. So during a chemical reaction, reactants are going to be used up. As more and more reactants are used up, products are going to begin to form and more and more products are going to form. So when we look at the products here, which of these can we measure? Which of these can we quantify? When we look at calcium chloride solution, this is a soluble salt and therefore it is going to exist in solution. It is not practical to track the concentration of a salt. There is no easy way to track the concentration of a salt during the reaction. So this is not possible. Then water. Now we also cannot track the volume of water being formed because the reactant is in solution as well. So there's no way to isolate the water being formed from the reaction mixture. It doesn't make any sense. 
So this is not one way that we can track the reaction as well. But whenever a gas is released, this can be easily tracked. So we can use this apparatus. This is called a gas syringe. A gas syringe has a scale and this gas syringe is connected to the conical flask through a delivery tube. So whatever gas is formed will pass through the delivery tube into the gas syringe and we can directly take the volume of gas that is produced. So the rate of reaction can be quantified using the increase in the volume of carbon dioxide gas produced per unit time. The more the volume of gas produced in one unit of time, the higher the rate of reaction because more product is being produced every unit of time. Another setup to measure the volume of gas being produced is this. This is the water displacement method. So whatever gas is produced will flow through this delivery tube into this vessel. So this container can either be a measuring cylinder or a burette. You fill up this container with water and you invert it into a basin of water. Atmospheric pressure will prevent the water from flowing out until it's 10 meters of water. Of course, we are not going to reach 10 meters. And what is going to happen is, as more and more gas is produced, this gas is going to go up to this end of the container, either the burette or the measuring cylinder. Then what is going to happen is, there is going to be a gas pressure here that is going to push the water out of the burette or the measuring cylinder. Gas is going to fill up this space and the volume of gas that fills up the space can be measured because of the scale on the measuring cylinder or the burette. Sometimes the change that reflects the rate of reaction is not measurable but observable. A good example of this is the reaction between sodium thiosulfate and acid. I will go through that in a separate video on its own. So if you take the time taken for a specific observation to take place and then we can get the rate of reaction by just counting one over time. So the question is, what then is the rate of reaction? How would we define the rate of reaction? From the example just now, we can see that the rate of reaction is either the quantity of reactant that is used up, as we saw the change in the mass of the reaction mixture or the concentration of the acid. So that is the quantity of reactant used up or the quantity of product form, as we saw in the increase in the volume of carbon dioxide gas per unit time. So the rate of reaction is either the quantity of reactant used up or the quantity of product form per unit time. That's it for this video guys. I hope you've learned something. If you have, please don't forget to support me by hitting that like button. It really does help to grow the channel. And if you enjoy videos like this, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I'll be producing at least one video a week. And if you are interested in daily revision short lessons, then you can either follow my Instagram account or my TikTok account. They both go under the same handle. The handle is in this corner. See you guys in the next video.